Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another episode on Rock and Dr. Rocks. And uh, today is a Tuesday, uh, May 17. And I am on the second day of a five week field course that I teach every summer out of South Dakota School of Mines. It's called Engineering Field Geology. And uh, this is our first day in the field. And I've got a group of students here down the road. And my intent is to uh, film the activities we do during uh, our various projects and then try to get them edited on uh, Saturday night and Sunday, which is the only time off I have during the week. And then have a couple of videos posted each week so you can see some more of the Black Hills and kind of see what we do uh, as engineers uh, in geology and how we assess things and different projects. And so uh, we are starting uh, this project today up in uh, Deadwood and we will walk down the road you can see the students behind me down there we have already been here in a previous video one of the first ones i did way back uh, almost a year ago now to where uh you know we looked at the uh, pre-cambrian cambrian contact and so we're starting here today uh, we are measuring uh, the section this week and we use an instrument called the Jacob Staff, which is just a stick that's five feet long. Uh, we set the Brunton compass in it so we can get angles. And using uh, measurements from the rock and the dip of the beds, then we can go along and measure thickness. And we'll also describe the geology. We describe structure. We describe engineering properties. And all of that information will come together in uh, what we call engineering stratigraphic columns. And I will, uh, they'll be compiling those through the week and turning in a product on Saturday and I will show you what those final projects uh, look like as well. So uh, I'll just be on and off through the day looking at various things, coming in, making comments, those types of things. So sit back, enjoy, hope these turn out, have fun. BNSS on my own personal compass, but Silver South, okay? That's only if you use the hinge to measure. Correct, but, and you should, because it's way faster. Yeah, so, all right. So does anybody have any questions about that? If you get up there and you have some problems, just let me know. No comment? The questions will come. Will come. There you go. Yep. All right. So we have to come up with a an estimate of the dip of the bedding. Okay. So let's focus on that first. Focus on that. Focus on your descriptions of this rock unit, this lower, you know, five feet that we identified here. Uh, and then we'll have a contact and we'll talk about how Okay, so this is the Precambrian Cambrian contact. If you recall from an earlier video, this is the uh, contact we were on. Uh, Precambrian rock down below, uh, dipping some, you can see this here, dipping about 70 degrees probably, and then relatively uh, flat line, just maybe a five degree dip, with some very large quartz boulders uh, caught up in this unconformity between the two. So this is the great unconformity roughly uh, 1.6 billion years old and 500 million years old. So a little over a billion years of missing history uh, caught up in that uh, thin line right in there. You guys know what you're doing? Yeah. Better say yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole herd of bighorn sheep right down here. I'm going to see how close I can get to them without them running off. Looks like some babies. Yeah, you're not going to get any closer in yet, so I'm starting to head out. 
right, this is another section of the Deadwood. Totally different character. This basal part right here is a really, really, really hard ortho quartzite. And then we get into this inner bedded unit that's anywhere from a few inches, maybe a foot thick beds. There are some quartzites in there, sandstones, uh, shale partings, uh, these types of things. So sea was coming in and out, in and out, depositing sand shale, sand shale, uh, different sequences in here. Uh, full of uh, bioturbation, which was caused by sea critters crawling around in the muds. So this stuff is full of, uh, of life, which is the earliest uh, critter life uh, recorded in the rocks on the planet. So that, again, this is in that 500 million year uh, age. It's got some strength in it. All right, we moved to the north end of Deadwood. We're right along the, the highway that comes into town. It's not the best place to do work, but we go through here every year. And uh, so we have moved across the canyon. I'll turn the camera over here. Uh, this morning, we started clear over on the side of this hill, and that's where we were walking. And we have then moved across the road to this site and we're still in the Deadwood Formation but we've missed a lot of the middle part of the Deadwood Formation. They are still measuring stratigraphic thickness as we come through here. So they still got their Jacob staffs and they're moving and they're going to be describing rock where they get access to it. So typical typical look of the upper deadwood the sand is kind of goldy color in here uh, there'll be a lot of greenish um, uh, minerals as well as the mineral glauconite which is a phosphatic mineral and then there's interbedded shales in here as well so so really a hodgepodge of a lot of things again it's all marine in origin A lot of rock fall here. This stuff breaks down from weathering, <clears throat> runoff, snowmelt, freeze thaw. All those processes breaks this stuff apart and then it falls down right to the edge of the road. And of course, this is a narrow walkway anyway. Typical Deadwood section here, Upper Deadwood. All these wavy lines in here. This is that's called bioturbation, formed by little critters crawling around on the bottom of the seafloor and kind of mucking up everything. So all this broken stuff in here is all bioturbated sands and muds. You find you find pieces of the critters and fossil trails and see where they crawled around. And of course, town of Deadwood is right down here. All the casino hotels start right here. Here's a shale. Shale parting in sands. So it's just sequences of sand shale, sand shale, sand shale. Bioturbated. There's silt stones in here. And another really perfect example of bioturbated sand. So this unit in here is five feet thick. And you can see it's all, nothing is continuous, it's all broken up. And uh, that is, again, called bioturbation from all the little critters that were crawling around in the sea. And then this unit up here, if you can see all these red kind of vertical tubes, all these little vertical tubes in this unit, then this unit up above us, these are called scolithus. And this was, these are burrows from a worm that lived in the sand on the beach. And they're kind of like, you know, clams that when the 
tide comes in or the wave comes in and goes out, they'll come up, stick their little tube up out of the hole and try to get some food and come down. That's what these are, little burrows from little critters that lived in the sand. So it's a very typical marker of the upper deadwood. So the upper deadwood ends right up here. And then we got green shale above us, which is the Winnipeg formation. Okay, this is uh, looking at an outcrop. This is the very upper part of the Cambrian Deadwood Formation. And then it's overlain by a shale that's that green outcrop right up here on the side of the hill. And this is a classic example of a change of slope due to resistance to erosion. So the sands are competent and they stand at a near vertical cliff. Shale is much, much softer. It erodes much easier and it forms a slope and so you see a slope break here it comes up and then goes back so a change in the angle of the profile in this instance is also consistent with the change of formation change of lithology and that's an extremely valid tool in field geology is looking at the morphology of the slopes to find changes and differences in lithology and you can see those from a distance and then you go up to it and actually scope out what the differences in the rock types are. So that's a method that we use, is looking for slope angle changes. Because something happened there, something's different, or else the slope would still, would still be a, a, a cliff if it, was, if it didn't change rock type. And that's what they're discovering, among other things today. Okay, so we came around the corner. You can see the students still spread out along the road down there. And that hill slope behind them is that green shale of the Winnipeg formation. And now we are in the upper part of the Winnipeg. Uh, this is called the Rufflock Siltstone. So it's silty. And then above it is the Whitewood, which is a dolomitic unit, mostly dolomites. There might be some limestone in it still in it, but it's mainly dolomite. So what their next assignment is, is to correctly identify this as a siltstone and then find the contact between the siltstone and the dolomite. So they'll have to change the formation. Okay, so when they get up here, that's what they're going to be doing. Alright, so this mass right up here is the Whitewood formation. It's uh, mainly a dolomitic unit. Uh, it could be some silty in areas as well, but it's mainly a dolomite. And in the Williston Basin, and of course this dips north toward the Williston Basin, and in fact, it'll probably be 10 miles north of here along this highway, as soon as you get out of the Black Hills, you are in the northern part of the Williston Basin. And from about another 150 miles north of here, all the way up into Canada, uh, they produce and have been producing since the 50s out of what is called the Red River Formation, and that is this unit right here. Uh, it's the white red dolomite, it's called the Red River Formation up further in the basin. For anybody who's familiar with the Red River, this is it right here. So this is one of the sites of uh, field trips for petroleum people because they can come here and see an outcrop, the rocks they produce out of the basin. We also just had our first uh, rain, so we had to put our rain gear on and it rained for about 20 minutes and now it's done. That's the way it is here. So, you know, there's the rain clouds moving off to the east. Thundering over there. And it looks like we're going to be in the clear here in a few minutes. Okay, another big producer in Williston Basin is the Bakken Formation. And the Bakken is above the uh, the Whitewood, and in the Black Hills, we do not have Bakken outcrop, but we have a time equivalent unit that's called the Inglewood. And Inglewood is deposited at the same time as the Bakken up in the center of the Wilson Basin. This is a slightly different lithology, a different rock type, and it does not have oil in it. And so, if you see ahead of me, on the slope on the left to see this brown and black and purple shale unit right up here. And that is the Inglewood. 
which is the time equivalent of the Bakken. Okay, rain is over. I struck out ahead of everybody a little bit, came up to my usual spot that I have an orange out here. It's always good to have some fruit in the middle of the afternoon when the sun's shining, tastes good, feels good. So if you've been watching my channel, uh, you've seen a lot of these formations. We've talked about them and, and looked at them in various ways. And right in front of us is the Madison uh, limestone. So Mississippian age uh, limestone. This is again, the main aquifer for this area. Uh, this is highly karstified here. That means there's a lot of cave formation in it. So if we walk up along the road here just a little bit, and we look off at this, this whole pod right in here, this is all a, what's called a solution sink. So the cave dissolves out the rock, and then that leaves a hole or a void, and it can't support itself, and the roof breaks, and all the rock above falls down into it. So broken chunks in here. Uh, there's, it's full of calcite. Uh, this block right ahead of us, this whole edge over here is all calcite, cave formations, box work, uh, various things right here, some more box work right on the, the edge of this block right in here. So this was, uh, this was part of a cave system once upon a time. It's all been you know, collapsed in and there's rocks in here from formations that are way above the, the um, top of the ridge up there that's they're gone even now, stripped off. So that's an old sink, probably what happened about the time the Black Hills were uplifted. Way, way in the distance out there. Still a little bit of snow on the slopes on Terry Peak. That's the local ski slope. Okay, so that's probably about it for today. Uh, this is day one. It is uh, 2.30 in the afternoon. Uh, we've probably got another hour here and then we'll head back to town to campus uh, and they will be working on putting together their stratigraphic columns this evening. All right, welcome How back. Day two, uh, we're out on the rocks again. This morning we are over in Wyoming today, uh, just right across the border of South Dakota and Wyoming in the uh, very western part of the Black Hills. And we are in uh, Sand Creek Canyon. And today we are going to uh, walk up and measure the uh, Minnelusa Formation, the Opeche Formation, and the uh, Minicata Formation. And so same, same drill as we were yesterday. We're going to end up uh, with our Jacob staffs. We're going to be measuring uh, this big outcrop uh, behind us. We're not going to be walking straight up there, but we're going to be going up the side and the nose and uh, measuring that. So we're going to end up with about uh, roughly 700, 750 feet of strata today. So starting right over here at the base of the Minnelusa. So right under us, what we're standing on here, what this road is on, is kind of the, the contact between the, uh, the Madison limestone and the Minnelusa. And, and this surface is representative. Well, there's a creek in here. This is Sand Creek right now. So this is all fluvial and alluvial. But stratigraphically, geologically, uh, there was an unconformity at the top of the Madison, uh, about 50 million years of weathering before the deposition of the overlying uh, Minnelusa. And so there is actually a residual soil uh, here between these two units. And I think that's what we're picking up right at the base of this rock is, uh, is a red shale. And that's what that uh, soil is represented by. And then we pick up on the, the, Manus, the Minnelusa. So we're going to be uh, working our way up this nose uh, up a pretty good way toward the top of that cliff. And then we'll come back down and then we'll walk clear across the canyon and we'll go up that nose. We'll find the same units that we were working on on this side of the canyon. We'll pick them up up there and then we'll go up that nose and we'll go up uh, another good hundred to maybe even close to 200 feet above the top of that ridge because that's a false top. There's actually kind of like stair step up there. And so uh, sit back, grab a coffee, and I'll be filming this whole trip today. Okay, so we're getting up on the, the side hill a little bit. We're probably 60 feet above uh, the road elevation right now. And 
this slope we've just come through is really really covered with uh, uh, it's just it's just a slope there's no no real outcrop it's a real difficult section to you know, describe just because there's no good outcrop so they're down below you know, working up through here you can see this it's mainly just uh, dirt and a lot of broken rock uh, that comes from above and it's real difficult to tell what's actually in here for rock types and until we get uh, right up here and now going up and we actually see you know outcrop up ahead of us and so uh, it's going to be easier for them here to identify what these rocks are uh, get thicknesses on them and then keep uh, marching up the hill so beautiful uh, cedar trees right here all this is uh, I think it is it, it, cedar, but I think it's western red cedar is what the species is. But this whole slope is just covered with uh, cedar trees. So great day out here. There's not a, much of a better place to be on a day like this doing this kind of stuff. As long as you stand up and don't fall down, you're fine. We're progressing our way up the cliff. They're making their way. This right here is called the amphitheater because it wraps around. You can't see this side because of these trees, but I'll get a shot from down there on the road get up here so this is the amphitheater section it's a pretty popular location geologically for people to come and look at the the rocks in the Minnelusa formation okay we're getting closer to our goal for this first part here so uh, just onward and forward we go at this location if you can see up through these trees there's a red a red outcrop up there we're gonna stop at the base of that and then trudge across to the other side and walk up this nose to the base of that red over there and then start going up from there so we do this in pieces but we get the same uh, formation so you can see here that red is in front of us and there's no way up uh, from this point that's why we have to go down and around again so they're doing good. They, we've got about uh, somewhat of an hour left before we have to leave this slope to be able to make make the rest of this trip through the day. So the scene's getting pretty good up here. We're getting pretty high. It's just a gorgeous area. This is quite spectacular here. This is this is a uh, quartz aronite sandstone, and it is uh, representative of an ancient uh, dune deposit. It's very very large scale cross beds in here that come from uh, wind, and there's a the thick the thick red sand. So if you look at the far cliff over there, you see a gray band. That's what we're in right here. It's this gray. And then above it is a red band. Uh, both of those are uh, windblown. They're aeolian, large scale cross beds uh, in them and sandwiched below and above. So below that gray unit, you can see some ledges over there. Uh, those are uh, uh, the, a rock type called dolomite, uh, magnesium carbonate. And then there's a, a prominent dolomite below the gray unit. 
and then there's a dolomite unit between the gray and the red unit and uh, when we finish on this side we're going to end up at that dolomite above the gray below the red and they'll use that as a marker bed and then when we walk up that nose over there we'll get to that point and then start measuring again uh, going up the canyon so I mean, this is spectacular stuff uh, getting right on the side of the cliff here looking up it's just just great and you can see the red up there above so that red sand is up right above us here so we've been we've been just at uh, not quite two hours uh, here on location and and so they're doing they're doing pretty well we got about 30 minutes left on this side and then we'll walk over to that other nose wish I was fishing Okay, we just worked our way through this massive gray sand unit that's lost in the trees over here. We can't see it. And then right in front of me is another marker bed. This is about two feet, maybe a little thicker in places of a dolomite. And then there's another uh, shaley slope, so a slope angle. And then we go up to that vertical cliff of that red sand. And on this side of the valley, there's no way to get up there without rock climbing and so we don't do that in this class so they're going to measure and describe to this unit right here stop and then we'll go down and back up the other side of the canyon and pick this up again and start from here and go on up or is it right here we can keep going this way sure you choose Okay, so I think we we'll work our way down right through here. Okay, so this is the what's called the amphitheater, and again, we're standing on right here, kind of the base of the Menelusa. And then all these rocks are the various layers in the Minnelusa. And you can see they're quite exposed on this uh, canyon wall. And it circles around in like 180 degrees. You know, so it's a big scoop in here. That's why it's called the amphitheater. And we just got done walking up from over here. And we went up to uh, the top of this gray sandstone that's right up here. That's where we stopped. Uh, we couldn't get up over the cliff so we came back down and now we're gonna walk back over to the other side and walk up that nose and go back up to the top of this gray sandstone pick up the same units there and then continue on to the top so this is a amazing place this is several hundred feet a cliff in here uh, it's just a great area really nice today's beautiful clear sky it's probably, well, I don't know for sure, but it, I would guess um, upper 60s to possibly lower 70s. I don't know if it's in the 70s yet or not, but it's just a perfect day. No wind. Okay, more in a bit. Okay, we're up on the other side of the canyon, and now I've come up through that uh, yellow quartz sandstone up through the red and I'm getting toward the top in fact there's that's the top of the red unit right there and you can see it's pretty good it's pretty good drop off here there's that massive gray sand down below us so I'm quite a bit above it And they're still down there banging around. So fun stuff. This is this is a really cool area to come through. It'll go pretty quick from now. It's uh 
let's see it's uh, 10 to 1 and we'll probably be at the top by uh, 2 30 quarter to 3 something like that and then we have to walk down it's a long walk down because you don't come back down the same way beautiful valley up here so the trees are just starting to leaf out down in the valley uh, some have leaves some are not you know there's a pot up there that's quite green and then these right in front of us are just starting to bud out Okay, you got this rock beat to death yet? Yeah, I think so. Okay. What are you calling it, Chloe? Sandstone with quartz and the cement that oh. fizzes. Oh. I was expecting a name. <laughs> that, that's the name. Oh. Girl. <laughs> it's, it's, per, it's patented by me, the new name. So it's not, it's not, it's never been said before or said. Or yeah. <laughs> I thought it kind of looked like Philip. Yeah, that's right. Well, that's, that's the Jacob staff still. <laughs> oh, all right, all right. Okay, so we just came out of the uh, Leo one, the upper red. It's called the Leo. Below it is Leo two. And uh, in the Powder River Basin and up north in North Dakota, again, these are all oil producers. So everything in here, these big sand units, uh, are filled, all the prosody is filled with oil and their producers. The other, the next marker in the Mendeloosa is what we're on right here. Uh, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but you can see the red soil underneath the grass. And this is about a 30 or 40 foot thick red shale that's known as the red marker. And in a lot of the oil country, when a well is being drilled, they will not even start doing the geology until they hit the red marker. And that tells them that they have uh, two potential oil sands right below and other productive units down below. So the red marker here is a pretty important regional stratigraphic marker for uh, the oil industry. And we are heading through it right now. And you can see that it's really uh, erodible. It doesn't have much internal strength. And so it forms a really nice slope. So the more competent rocks, the harder rocks, form the cliffs, the shales, the soft rock, siltstones, they will be uh, eroded and, and form these slopes. So we're just walking up the slope right now to the next unit up above, which is a cliff former, uh, a yellow sandstone that we're going to be going up through next. So they're down below me there still. So the, the vertical elevation between where they're standing and where I'm standing is pretty much the thickness of the, the red marker. So they're working on a dolomite bed that it is at the top of the Leo sand. And then they'll be up here shortly. Getting beat up today. What is? Oh, he is. Hi, mister. Think. Well, okay, heading up. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I told them they can't jake up there unless they can fly up. Yep. We're getting close though. Getting close. Almost out of the middle of Just watch your step going up here. So the answer to what do we do in the field? That right there. Bang on rocks, describe them, measure them, assess properties. Make notes, keep moving. Alright, so we're nearing the top. You can see we're quite a ways above the 
the red sand, which was way down below us now, down over that cliff. And we've come up and now we're in a kind of a yellow sand and we've hit a snag because this is uh, like a 30 foot vertical cliff. So what we do is we drop a tape down and they measure to the bottom down here, to the bottom of this tape. And then we walk around down about 100 feet, 150 feet, and then climb up over a ridge we can get up over. And then come up to the top up here, read the tape for thickness, and then just keep on going. So we're getting toward the top of the Menorlusa here. And they're still busy working. Yeah, I said they're still busy working and they're all down below me where they belong. Oh, I hear a voice up there. I don't see anybody. <laughs> okay, so we are finally out of the Menelusa. The Menelusa ends right down there in those trees on that flat. That's the top of the Menelusa. Then right now we're on red shale. You see the red soil. This is the Opichi shale. And it's maybe 60-ish feet thick. And then it's capped by a Permian age limestone, the Menacotta limestone. So if you've been watching these videos, uh, about a month ago I went out with some folks from the U.S. Geological Survey and we did some slug testing <clears throat> in posometers that were into the Minicotta limestone south of Rapid City and this is that unit uh, that we were in so at that point it was below ground and we had a well into it and here we're walking up to it so we're going to see it here firsthand Oh, and that's it. Okay, so we're at the Manicata. So contact with the Opichi and the limestone is right in here. This is very, very uh, small. It's a crystalline rock, precipitated uh, calcium carbonate. It's like 98% calcium carbonate, so it's really pure. Very finely bedded. See the beds. It's up to up to 40 feet thick. It's not that thick right here. I don't know if the part of it has been uh, eroded off the top or it's just variable thickness, but but they're coming up. So let's try to let's try to get up here. Okay, success. So another year of hiking up that big old in that slope without falling or killing myself, that's always a success. So let's walk over to the edge, look down into the canyon. So Spearfish, Spearfish, South Dakota is on the other side of that mountain over there. This is looking off to the south. 
of course into the Black Hills and then if we look north then of course we fall out of the Black Hills onto the prairie and we flip north so okay so um, I-90 is in that uh, valley out there uh, in front of that far red uh, cliff out there and then further out beyond you see the the skyline that goes up into the prairie going north uh, up into the northern part of South Dakota uh, you know so you know Harding County uh, Buffalo South Dakota would be way over here over the horizon but from here probably a hundred thirty miles uh, to the north so it's about that far to the North Dakota boundary and we're just inside Wyoming so if you got back down here in the valley <clears throat> to the interstate and then go back about a mile uh, the South Dakota Wyoming boundary is coming in here something like this so we are just over the line and into Wyoming so now we wait for all the students to get up here and we head back so I hope you enjoyed this couple of days in the field there's gonna be more to come from camp I hope they hope they turn out should be kind of fun to see the kind of things we do so as always if you like this you know give it a like share it with your friends let some people know of the things that you out here in the Black Hills for beauty things to do if you've never been here plan a trip send me a comment if you need to need some suggestions on where to go if you get here as always thanks for watching see ya